Well, bless the Lord, everybody. Everybody bless the Lord. <laughs> ah, good to be here one more time to share the gospel of Christ with you to get you ready in the word. Praise God. To strengthen your faith in the word and to build up your most holy faith in the Lord. Amen. And I hope that today you're ready to get in another level in the Lord tonight. As the word is meat to our spirit, man. Hallelujah. Food to our soul. Spirit and life and life and spirit of God being released in us through his word. Amen. Praise God. You ready now? Hallelujah. Come on, lift us, lift, us, lift those hands and let us acknowledge our heavenly father in the house. Father, we thank you for another occasion to be here to declare your word of truth. We believe that those, as you said, those that have an ear to hear, let them hear. Not everyone desire to hear this word, but for those who hear and desire to hear, we avail ourselves to declare this word that they who hear and mix it with faith will be profitable to them, that your kingdom will be established in their hearts, and that indeed your glory will be unveiled through their lives in greater and greater dimensions to the glory of your precious name. We give you the praise and the glory and praise you for victory even now as we declare your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, for grace, for spirit of wisdom and revelation to be manifested in our midst to give us greater enlightenment in your word. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you all for coming and for those who are joining us online. Thank you for doing so. We believe that the word of God is quick and it's powerful and it is what? Sharper than any two-edged sword. We wanted to get into the word because Jesus said we don't live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. And that's the most effective position you can be in in a demand for the word of God and to use the word and to apply it that you can see the power of the word of God and the life that God is intend for you manifest in your life. Hello, somebody. Praise God. We are still dealing with the, the point of thought on the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. As we've spoken over and over some weeks now, we've been talking on the gospel of the kingdom and on different dimensions of the characteristics of those in the kingdom. And I still like to continue on that to emphasize some, some very powerful characteristics of those in the kingdom, that those who would examine themselves and realize that somewhere they have slackened in some ear will can catch up and get back on track with the Lord and really embrace a deeper and more effective relationship with the Lord in fulfilling their purpose in the earth. Praise God. So we are here declaring the gospel of the kingdom, we believe it is the gospel that Jesus preached and we are hamming that home for those that don't know that those might be just joining us for the first time and might be saying we, we didn't know it like that. I said Matthew 4 verse 23, praise God we start there at what Jesus used to do. Hallelujah. We are going to use the same Matthew to show you that it is also repeated in Matthew more than once to show that it's not just quoting from another gospel as to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to the four gospels, but we can even use one and show that it had been repeated there several times about Jesus preaching this gospel. Amen. Praise God. Matthew 4 verse 23 says, Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Praise God. And that's very powerful that he didn't went to the synagogues merely to keep uh, ceremonies and feasts and holy days and Sabbaths, but he went to the synagogue mainly with a message, teaching in their synagogue and preaching. What was he teaching and preaching? The gospel of the kingdom. Of course, healing and, uh, and, and miracles follow. But it wasn't the healing and the miracles he was preaching about. 
but more so preaching about the gospel of the kingdom and those who had faith in him as the Christ and believing that he was truly sent hallelujah as the Christ of course miracles follow but the miracles follow to confirm the message that he brought and the message was about the gospel of the kingdom we also see it in Matthew 9 verse 35 that Jesus went about all cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people my god is awesome when people believe this gospel miracles will follow amen and the greatest miracle hallelujah is that a soul is one to the kingdom of god hello somebody the deliverance from sin that qualifies one as an ear not as slave but as an ear of the kingdom and he also told his disciples who he appointed as apostles that they ought to preach that gospel also because we see it in Matthew 10 verse 7 to 8 he told him what to preach and he told him what to do he told him go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand now certainly that wasn't all that they said they were still speaking on matters concerning what he taught them about what he says he told them what to say and it was still about the gospel of the kingdom and he said they should also heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely give praise god and he also told him that this gospel would bring in the end of the age they asked him about that in matthew 24 when he spoke about the destruction of the temple and of course they want to know when that would happen and when would be the end of the age and the sign of his coming and he told him much in that whole chapter about the end of the age and about his sign of his coming at his verse 3 he sat down at the mount of Olives and the disciples came to him privately saying tell us when will these things be what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age hallelujah and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Now he's speaking to his disciples. Yesterday he says to them, Take heed that no one deceive you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. In other words, wars and rumors of wars will not be ushering the end. He says, even nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, huh? pestilence and earthquake in various places he says all these things are the beginning of sorrows notice there those are not the things that mark the end we are still having much earthquake today and much pestilence and famines and war across the land but still he says these are not the beginning the end of the days he says these are the beginning of sorrows he says then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you'll be hated by all nations why for my name's sake because of his name it's not because of religion it's because of his name and what his name signifies and testify of is that there must be an end to sin <laughs> As they, that's another point we have to make to some he says then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another huh? and then by that he says then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many watch the flow of what he's saying the true ones who he appoints are being killed and many of the true ones who we appoint who are being killed are now being replaced by false prophets. Come on. And as a result of that, 
watch the flow from that means of false prophets with false prophecy, false word, false teachings and deceiving many, he says, then lawlessness will abound. Sin increases and then the love of many will grow cold. Fruitlessness. Come on. Fruitlessness. Then he says, then, then, then he says, you, he who endures to the end shall be saved. And he tells them then, what, what will usher in the end? Verse 14. He says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world huh? as a witness to all the nations. And he says, and then the end will come. So it is the gospel of the kingdom that will usher in the end. Come on now. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he said, give me some more here. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let's him, let him understand. He says, then, those, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountain. Let him who is on the host of go down to take anything. Him who is on the host of not go down to take anything out of his house and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Come on. He said, there'll be a vast amount of bloodshed in that day. He says, woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Come on. And pray that your flight may not be in winter. Or on the Sabbath, for then there'll be great tribulation. And he's speaking, of course, about the point where the Antichrist <laughs> manifests already and have already signed off with a seven year peace treaty amongst Israel to settle the war and the strife that is in the Middle East. It has been something that long been sought after by presidents in ruling nations to get peace in the Middle East. But this will be signed off as a seven year peace treaty and Israel will once again be allowed to complete their temple that only a peace of the wall left there now that they call wailing in the wall here praying before. A peace of the wall. <laughs> But the thing is that it, they'll be allowed to rebuild it and the, the temple proceeding will start again. They will still start back their sacrifice and offering in the temple, still expecting for the Christ to come the first time. Hallelujah. They believe now the kingdom is being restored to Israel. Why? Because their temple has finally been rebuilt. Come on, remember they asked about the kingdom being restored. Yeah? But do you have, you have to realize that something is very powerful here that he says when you see the abomination, the what? The abomination of desolation that takes place. Then he says, then you will know. Come on now. Yes, that's verse 15. It says, therefore, when you see the abomination, of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. Ah, when you see the abomination of this, spoken by who? Daniel the prophet, he says. Then, ah, ah, standing in the holy place. So he says, something will happen in that holy place that's in the temple. The temple then being rebuilt. Because at that time the temple was not yet destroyed, you know much more to be rebuilt. And they're waiting for it to be rebuilt in our time. In our season. Come on, somebody. They're looking for that now. Come on now. And he said, but when you see that abomination of desolation, huh, that Daniel spoke about, I want to bring you into some point with that. 
Hallelujah. All right, so it's Daniel 9, verse 27. It says, he will then confirm a covenant with many for one week. He shall confirm a covenant. That's what we call the seven-year peace treaty that will be signed off that Israel is allowed to rebuild their temple and to start back their sacrifice and offering again in the temple. Come on now. It says for one week, but it's not seven, it's not a seven-day week that is being spoken of here. But it's actually a seven-year peace treaty. But it says in the middle of the week or in the point where they call three and a half years into the seven years, he shall bring an end to the sacrifice and an offering. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate even unto the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. He will cause the, 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 the sacrifice to cease. Come on. You follow me here. Because he will stand in the temple and speak abominable things. He will gloat at the great thing that has happened with the temple and with the whole world because then the whole world will be a united nation. Will come together united because the, 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 the what they call the, 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 what they call, where they you for it? The conflict in the Middle East will finally be resolved by this world ruler. And all the world will praise him. So he will no doubt feel assured with all the love and the applause he's getting from the world that he can go into the temple uh, that is in Israel now and stand in their holy place and speak out of his mouth that he is God. And that is where the thing is going to get way messy. Come on, somebody. Hello. In Daniel chapter 11. Yes, yeah, Daniel chapter 11. <laughs> Daniel chapter 11, verse, verse what, 31. The forces shall be mustered by him, and they shall what? They shall defile the sanctuary fortress. Then they shall take away the daily sacrifice and place there the abomination of desolation. Come on. Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God, huh? shall be strong and carry out great exploits those of the people who understand shall instruct many yet for many days they shall fall by the sword and famine and by captivity and plunder why because those who know god and resist him being that is the one that caused the whole world to come to peace at that time and when that world come to peace the world is going to enjoy a type of prosperity you know quote unquote that they have not enjoyed before because now the world will be under one rulership so it don't require no different kind of currency anymore and nobody currency is more than anybody currency because if it's under one government all currency have same value Right now it's under a whole lot of different government. But this world ruler, I'm talking to you, hello, will be able to bring the world into that level of prosperity. And because the world been long craving for prosperity message, you know, they don't mind who bring them into it. And they are going to praise him 
as their God. But those in Israel will get up and refute it. And it's at that point, the people now will turn against Israel and say, enough of them, get rid of them. In other words, they'll be seen as the ones that keep in the world from entering into its progress. I'm talking to you. Hello. Huh? So when he comes and speaks such things in the temple, huh? that wicked one, <laughs> hello, then that's when all that's what Paul, David, and um, Daniel is called the abomination of desolation. In verse, look at Daniel 12, verse 11. From the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be what? 1,290 days. That's approximately three and a half years as i said the one week is not a seven day week when he says he makes a covenant for one week it is about a seven year peace treaty that is done and he convinced iraq and palestina to to give remove their temple to a different location to, and to give israel the priority to rebuild their temple and that's that temple is at this should be built at the very place where Iraq has built their mosque, their holy place. But though they say it is holy, it's not treated as holy. Boys in there playing football, stones and things in there. They're not they just want to do it as a something to irritate Israel for war because they really want to war with Israel. So, so that's been an on and off thing with them and Israel over the years. And so, but this world ruler will be able to bring a silence to that. Eh? But he said, but blessed is he who what? Waits and comes to what? To the 1,335 days. Come on. But you go your way till the end for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the what? End of the days. So the, at that point when they try to strike against Israel, not to wipe out Israel because he has all the world's army and leaders backing him. So he's coming now to wipe out Israel. He says it is at that point the Lord himself shall appear to defend israel ah my god come on somebody uh, that is the reference that he's speaking about here in matthew 24 we call the great tribulation the what mm -hmm. he said it in matthew 24 verse 21 for then Though there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, not, nor ever shall be. In other words, it will not be like that even after that time. Come on. He says, but unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days, come on, will be short. You're following here. Hallelujah. For the elect's sake, what? Ah, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because God intend to show up to deliver Israel. Come on, somebody. You hearing me? And God will not allow them to wipe them out. Because Paul did declare it that Israel will still be saved. God has not forgotten his covenant with Israel. Come on now. Huh? Hallelujah. No, no. He, 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 I think it's in Zechariah. Zechariah 14 verse, verse 1 
to two. It says, Behold, a day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will what? Gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, houses, huh? houses rifled, and women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fight in the day of battle. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives with faces which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from the east to the west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall be moved towards the north and half moved towards the south. Then you shall what? Then you shall flee to my mountain valley. For the mountain valley shall reach to Azar. Huh? Yes, you shall flee. And you shall flee. As you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, thus the Lord, my God, will come and all the saints, huh? And all the saints with you. Come on now. So who is the saints with them? The Lord coming and all the saints with them. Come on now. You seeing it? And it shall come to pass in that day that there be no light the lights will diminish to be it will be one day which is known to the lord neither day nor night but at evening time it shall happen that it will be light and in the day shall be the live it in the in that day it shall be that the living water shall flow from jerusalem half of them towards the eastern sea half of them towards the western sea in both summer and winter shall occur. The Lord shall be king what? In that day it shall be. The Lord is one and his name. And the land shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Yeba. South of Jerusalem. Joseph shall be raised up and napped in her place from Benjamin's gate. To the gate of the first gate of the corner gate from the tower of Hananel to the king's wine press. The people shall dwell in it and no longer shall be and no longer shall be utter destruction but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited and this shall be the plague which the Lord shall strike all the people who fought against Jehoshaphat, their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Come on. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets. Come on. Their tongues shall dissolve in their mouth. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor. Huh? And raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Judah will also fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of what? All the surrounding nations shall be gathered together. Gold, silver, apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule on the camel and the donkey and on all the cattle that will be in those camps so shall this plague be what's the plague what's the plague their flesh dissolve while they're still standing their eyes dissolve in their eye socket their tongues dissolve in their mouth that is the fervent heat what the Lord said shall come upon the earth when he said he will strike the nation as two edged swords shall come out of his mouth and strike the nation down and the antichrist will be destroyed oh 
Jesus. And all those who are cheering him on with him, including the false prophet, because a false prophet will be there. In other words, church will still be represented, you know. Yes, man, church will still be represented. There will be a man they consider as holy man who is standing with the Antichrist, who is called the false prophet. And he's speaking as one speaking for God. Huh? and cheering on the works of this man that it is authorized by God and so you know even in every political campaign they still try to use those in the church to influence those who listen to the church and so they still be a representative of the church not really of the church of God you know what he really says is of the synagogue of Satan but they're giving this resemblance, say, he's speaking as a holy man, but he's a false prophet. Come on. And he's backing up this man who is an antichrist. He's not coming as a, as a religious man. He's coming as a world ruler. Huh? He's coming as a, he's not much about religion. He's not religion. He's, in fact, the word of God said, he will exalt himself against anything call God <laughs> so he's not about religion but he's about power and rule and he will govern with a firm hand come on anything that resists he coming to crush and many saints will be killed in that day because anyone who resisted him of course he would kill and they would then think that man it looked like he's really the Lord. It looked like he's really God. Come on. Because there are some unusual things happening. He's not just functioning in the natural. But he's functioning with power. Supernatural power. And people will believe because it is supernatural, it must be God. Because the world loves signs, you know. Come on, huh? As Second Thessalonians two, is that the passage? As verse nine. All right, take it from we we'll take it from here, from verse one. Paul says in Second Thessalonians two, from one, he says, "Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and what, and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind." are troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. In other words, somebody let out some rumor said Christ came already and even wanted to say some may have even forged some letter said Paul wrote it but Paul said uh -uh, not by my hand nor by my word nor by letter I've given no such word come on he says, let no one deceive you by any means. Why? Why? For that day will not come, what? Unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. Who is that? The son of perdition is the Antichrist. You got it? Remember, even Judas was called a son of perdition. Come on. You remember that? Praise God. He say he's doomed from the beginning. In other words, he's a son of Satan. A child of Satan. He said he opposed and exalts himself above all that is called God. And that is worshipped. So that he what? That's the abomination in the temple. You see it? Woo! You seeing it? That's what we read from Matthew 24 about the abomination of desolation that take place in the temple. He will sit as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that's when Israel start to clear them closer. They know they go go on. So this man come in our temple that just built. He's not a Jew. 
and announce he is God. And the upsurge that comes from that blasphemous declaration will cause bloodshed in Israel like never before. Come on, it's only a remnant of them will be saved. I'm telling you. He says, so it, Paul's made int about that. Do you see that? He says, it will not happen until that one is revealed who opposes and exalts himself against all that is called God and that is worshipped so that he even sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. So he said, do you not remember when I was still with you, Paul said? I told you these things. Come on. Do you realize that now? As we quoted from Daniel. And we quoted from what Jesus said. So we are showing that more was said about it than just kingdom of evidence that and repent. When the gospel of the kingdom is preached, there's more to it. Right? So he's saying that everyone is not privy to all the information because the revelation or the mystery, the hidden truths of the kingdom is not for the world. It's for you who believe. Come on now. Huh? So he says, and now you know what is restraining. What is what? Restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. He says, in other words, he will not be revealed until there's a great falling away from the church. Come on. That's why I told you from what Jesus said in Matthew 24. He said, it is when he says the true apostles, the true teachers, the true leaders he sent forth, many of them, he says, will be arrested, put in prison, cast out of synagogues. Now, then he says, then false prophets will arise. You remember it? Look again at it in Matthew 24. Then they will deliver you to, deliver you up to, we're talking about the great tribulation. But he's talking about tribulation to them. But there's a great tribulation that follow. Come on. You, you follow following here? They'll kill you and you'll be hated by all nations. For my, he's speaking to the the, the apostles there, but he's also speaking to Israel. You get it? He's also speaking to Israel because all the apostles there that were chosen were Jews and were Israelites. And they wanted to know what would happen. The three questions they asked, I believe it's in verse 3. The three questions they asked had regarded with them their temple, when would it be that the temple would be destroyed? What would be the sign of the Christ coming? And what would also be the sign of the end of the age? Three questions they ask. So you have to be mindful of those three questions when you're reading the passage. In Matthew 24, that is not one question being answered. It's not just about what will the end be like. It's about when these things will be. What will be the sign of your coming? And what will be the sign of the end of the age? And he said, the sign of the end of the age is what he tells him in verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom is preached into all the earth huh? as a witness to all the nations. Then the end will come. You got it? But he also spoke about what would be the signs. When would these the signs of the end of the age be. He says that would be the, the, the sign of the end of the age when the gospel is preached. But he also speaks there, go down further. Hallelujah. Right, so uh, let's go back to where we were before. Praise God. All right, yes. He sat on the Mount of Olives. A disciple came to him private says, tell us what will be, what, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? The end day. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that what? That no one deceives you. Take heed that 
No one deceives you. And then he goes into what we needed, all the deception would come. Because who is he telling? Take in no one who deceives you. Yes, his disciples would. But, but his disciples there were apostles. Follow him. Because I want to see something. Because they're the one he's saying when this gospel is preached in all the nations, then he, he's still the preacher as he's talking to. You getting it? All right, follow. Watch this now. He says, Many will come in my name saying, What? I am the Christ. Verse 5. Give me further down and I'll follow and I'll show you what I'm looking for. He says, You will hear of wars, rumors of wars. He said, that The end is not yet in verse 6. Correct? Then it says, Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, virus, famine, pestilence, earthquake. He says, That is not the end. Verse 8 tells you. Those things are just the beginning of sorrow. Correct? Verse 9, then it says, you will de deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and then you'll be hated by. No, that is not just particular, just the apostle, but the nation itself that stand with the Lord. Those who are that know the Lord within the nation of Israel will be hated for his name's sake. You're getting it? Go further, let me show you. Go further. I'm going to give you some other verse to give you further understanding on it. It says, then many will be offended and what? Betray. In other words, for, for monetary gain and for profit and comfort, many will turn against each other to side with the government or the ruling power to get their stay there. So they'll be offended and betray one another and hate one another correct but at that point he says what will happen now that's where the false prophet coming you see where where the 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 the, the true the ticket in verse 9 and 10. you see where verse 9 10 and 11 right he says then when they the, the truth ones who the lord sent out to teach the people are persecuted and killed there's a gap left for false prophets to rise where true leaders fall false prophets rise i'm talking to you i wanted to understand something here we are what where true leaders fall, false prophets rise. Come on. Because true leaders are like light to their community. And when the light has been removed, what happened? Like, likewise, we saw when Jesus was crucified. Huh? Darkness was upon the face of the earth when he was on that cross and gave up his breath. Then he says, darkness covered the earth. Because what? The light had been taken away. And even the disciples that he trained, they became disheartened and discouraged. Because when he appeared to them after the resurrection and talking to them, what did they say? We thought this man was the Christ. But they killed him. We thought he was our savior. But he's dead. Remember that? So even they lost faith about the Lord. The Lord had to once again remind them of what the prophet said. And open back scriptures to them to restore and renew their faith. Back in what the word of God said. You hear? All right, look at this. Luke 24 says, Now behold, two of them were traveling. Two of them were traveling the same day to a village called what? Emmaus. And he says, Which were, were seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together. Huh? They talked together of all the things which had happened. 
So it was while they conversed and reasoned that who? Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained. In other words, they didn't pick up that it was he that was there with them because he still considered them dead. So that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? And then one of those who, whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and have not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning who? Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be what? Condemned to death and crucified. Huh? But we were what? Notice there. We were hoping. He don't say we are hoping. We were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. They have lost faith in that. He says, indeed, beside all this today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, certain women of the company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. They came saying that, he had, that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Huh? Praise God. And certain... Huh? And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found that it was just as the woman had said. But him they did not see. Then he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, slow of heart to what? Slow of heart to what? Slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets. He didn't even say all that I have spoken. Because he says, it, there are other prophecies confirming what he said. Got it? Slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets had spoken. Are not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Come on. And beginning what? At Moses and all the prophets. He what? expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning what himself then they drew near to the, to the village to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone farther but they constrained him saying abide with us for it was towards evening and the day is far spent and he went in to stay with them and now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Hallelujah. Then their eyes were what? Is the way he broke that bread. Raised it and broke it. Like when he was having that last supper with them. It will call to their memory. Who does it like that? You get it? And then they look keenly at who was with them. Their eyes were open. They knew him and he vanished from their sight but they said to one another did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us huh? while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture to us come on you must know your teacher man oh hallelujah and when you hear the teaching of cancer, no man, we know who teach like that. Oh God Almighty. Come on, somebody. In Jesus Himself said it. My sheep, they know my voice. Come on. They don't have to make out the image of what He looked like. If they hear the voice, they must know. Come on. But unbelief had clouded their judgment. You got it? And at that point, 
they could have been deceived by someone else because now they are thinking and saying we thought it was he who would redeem Israel so what were they thinking now come on now there's, a, there's going to be a great falling away when sheep are left without true shepherd it's only those who truly drew substance on the shepherd to be able to maintain some loyalty to the word when others fall away because many who were just falling because of the miracles and the fish and bread and the you know and the healings and the deliverance they they wouldn't follow anymore because the man that did it dead they don't have anybody to carry the sick to but those who are there not just to carry sick and get healing and miracle but were there for the word they still stuck to the word didn't they that's why the lord could find them and expound the word and though they didn't recognize us he's speaking to them they still were enlightened in the spirit and they say no man stay with us he want more of that no so they constrain them they don't say no man you all right nice meeting you hope we we'll see you another time no they pressure they compel them to stay with them because they found the engaging in the word refreshing and reviving and renewing huh and then it came to them it's the same one is the master that is teaching them come on so he said there's going to be a falling away a what oh my god many will heed seducing doctrines and devils will seduce them out from the truth why because the love of the truth was not in their heart come on they love things that come from the truth but they don't love the truth are you hearing me there's a difference there isn't it there are those that love the kind of life and the blessings that is promised by coming to the lord but do they love what the lord is teaching ah, come on somebody you get it ah, so it says the lawless one is coming according to what the working of satan with all power signs and and with all unrighteous what deception among who those who perish because what they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved come on they did not what receive the love of the truth that they might be saved and he said for this reason god will send them strong delusion come on that they should believe the lie come on now somebody huh that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but at pleasure in what ah oh god had pleasure in unrighteousness come on and righteousness is sin my god come on somebody hello they want to live life their way huh come on but well, listen what paul said to those who believe he says we are bound to give thanks to god always for you huh brethren beloved by the lord why because god from the beginning chose you what he chose you for for destruction oh come on 
he chose you for salvation through what sanctification by the spirit and by what belief in the truth come on somebody give me more to which he called you by what why Paul call it our gospel and not just the gospel is it because there are others out there say they preach the gospel but you need to know who God appoint you to hear I'm talking to you <laughs> because not everyone that say gospel is gospel uh, he says but to what God called he says you were called he said to which he called you by our gospel you were called to salvation give me four, um, 13 and 14 he says that you were called to salvation huh through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel he called you to sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth by our gospel that's what paul is saying our gospel brought you to that for the obtaining of what the glory of our lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Hey, give me some more. Hallelujah. Huh? He says, Therefore, brethren, what? Stand fast and what? Hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by what? Word or our epistle, our letter to you. You may, now you, now may our Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And our God and Father, who has loved us and given us what? Everlasting consolation and good hope by grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in what? Every good word and work. Come on, somebody. That's not some wishful thinking. Hallelujah. And Paul is saying, man, if you're in this man, you better be wholeheartedly in it. Otherwise, you're going to get left. Come on, you're going to become part of the spoils. Because he says, remember, who is he bringing this strong delusion to? Those who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in what? And right, they had pleasure in what was not right in the eyes of the Lord. They love doing things their way. Hello. God is the God of truth. Are you here today? God is what? God of truth. Christ is declared as the truth. And the Holy Spirit is declared as the spirit of truth. Huh? In Psalms 31 verse 5. It declared that God is the God of truth. It's something Jesus quoted while he was on the cross. He quoted from this verse saying, Into your hand. Remember that statement? I commit my spirit. But that wasn't all that the verse said. It says, You have redeemed me, O Lord God, of truth. <laughs> you have redeemed me, O Lord God, of truth. Hallelujah. The same thing the Lord said. He said, You will not allow my, my flesh to see corruption. Hallelujah. He believed in giving up his spirit to the Father. The Father would raise up back that body. And he in fact did. Come on. Huh? You're here. Glory to God. God is the God of truth. Hallelujah. In St. John 
7 verse 28 God is the God of truth St. John 7 verse 28 says then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple saying you both know me and you know where I am from and I have not come of myself but he who sent me is true whom you do not know come on you don't know whom sent me and he says but I know him for I am from him and he sent me come on no they said no is the Jesus is the father talking to himself is he have himself come people that don't have the love of the truth in them strong delusion is coming I'm talking to you you better hear this word you think it's everybody that say, Lord, Lord, go ahead. Come on. John 8, verse 26. John 8, verse 26. Jesus said, I have many things to say to you and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me, somebody sent him. Yes, he says, he who sent me is true. And I speak, huh? I speak to the world those things I heard from him. I heard it from him. Come on, somebody. He didn't say, what I want to say, I speak to you. He said, I heard it from him who sent me. There's a difference with the him and the me. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah, Titus 1, verse 2. Hallelujah. Glory to God, he says, In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Huh? He says that God cannot lie. He's the God of truth. Come on, somebody. He's the God of Jesus Christ, declare himself as the way, the truth, and the life in saint john 14 he says thomas said to him lord we we do not know where you're going because the lord says where i'm going you know and the way you know so thomas responded to him lord but we don't know where you're going so how can we know the way and jesus tell him is not someone two three turn right turn left instruction he says i am the way in other words, I am the one who gets you there. I am the one that brings you into this level of truth. I am the one that brings you into this new life. Call eternal life. Come on. It's not a three-step program. He says, I am the one. The way, the truth, so he's the embodiment. Huh? He's the full embodiment of truth. There's no truth outside of him. And he says, and the life is in him. No one the Colossians 1, but the Colossians 1 said he's the express image of the invisible God. The fullness of the God that dwell in him bodily come on somebody huh that's for colossians 1 verse 15 he's the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation for by him all things were created and in that are in heaven that are on earth visible and invisible whether throne dominion or principles or powers all things were created what through him if it said through him is it just saying him al he alone did it someone did it through him come on come on 
You would say that the Lord is preaching the word. The Lord is teaching you the word through me. And if I say the Lord is teaching the word through me, is it I alone? No, the Lord is teaching through me. I'm a vehicle being used to get it to you. I am sent by him to get the word to you. Same thing Jesus is saying. All things were created through him and for him. But he never said all things are created by me. What is the word through me? And you got to watch those stuff because some people say the love of truth is not in them. Come on, somebody. Because truth is speaking against their theology. Yeah. Hello. Praise God. But you got to get back to what the word of God says. Are you here? Hallelujah. The love for truth must be in the believer. Come on, somebody. Anybody who loves the Lord must love the truth. And this love for truth must surpass love for brother, sister, mother, son, daughter, husband, or wife. Come on now. It is for that re very reason why some would have to lose those relationships to gain or to maintain their salvation. Because they love truth. It's not because they don't want to have brother, sister, mother, daughter, son. Because, but because of love of truth, some will turn away from them. Hello? Huh? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In second John 1. Yes, John said, grace and mercy and peace. Ha, huh? be with you from God, the Father, and from who? The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. And he says, Rejoice, I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children what? Walking in truth as we receive, receive commandment from the Father. There is a Father command that we should walk in the truth. Come on. He don't command, no. He, Take a little dip, put your, put your little opinion and spin on it. Come on. Talk what you feel to believe. I, I feel say. It's not a feel say. It's what the words say. Come on, somebody. It's not a feel say talk. This is not about opinions and views. We are here to declare the word of God. Come on, somebody. The word of God is truth. Jesus said it in John 17, verse 17. He says, sanctify them by your truth. For your word is truth. And the Holy Spirit works with the word of God. There's an inseparable union between God and his word. You cannot reject God's word and not reject God. I'm talking to you. Huh? That's why there's a need for you to continue in the word. So Jesus said to those who believe them in John 8 verse 30 to 36. He said to those Jews who believed on him. If you continue or abide in my word. Then you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Did they continue in the word? No, they did not. Eventually, he called them in John 8, verse 44, children of the devil. Come on. So he knows once they reject the word, they cannot be saved. You can't be saved without the word. I'm talking to you. The word of God is truth. There is no true salvation without truth. Woo! Glory to God. Anyone who does not believe the word will not experience the full work 
of the Holy Spirit in their lives. I'm talking to you. It is the truth huh, that sets a person free from sin. Jesus said that in John 8, huh? verse 34, 36. He says, anyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. Come on now. Anyone who what? Commits sin. That is not committed. It is commit and will continue to commit. Come on now. That, that word was used is commits sin. Anyone who says who live like that is a slave. Is a what? Is a slave of sin. In other words, sin is their master. You cannot have sin as your master and the Lord as your master at the same time. Uh -uh. Both are not serving the same agenda. Come on now. Both are not serving the same purpose. He says a slave does not abide in the house. So he says slave can be in the house. But they will not abide. They will be evicted from the house. What house is he talking? The kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was talking about that yesterday. That in every house, there are different vessels. Not all in the house will be saved. Come on now. Not all in the house, what? We, we see there it is in 2 Timothy 2. Come on. You there? Verse 20 to 21 it says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of what? Wood and clay. Come on. The wood and clay would afterwards become disposable. The gold and silver would remain. Watch this. He says, because look what he says. Some for honor and some for what? Dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, what should they cleanse themselves from? Huh? From dishonor. So he's talking about the dishonor with reference to the wood and clay. She's talking about those who are fleshly carnal believers versus spiritual minded believers come on now he says if anyone what cleanses himself from the latter he will be what a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master prepared for what every good work Ah, uh, now isn't the wood and the clay used for good work? Yes, they are. They are still vessels in the house that I use. But he says, when they are finished used, they are thrown out. You see, that's what he's talking about in the scripture of uh, Matthew 7, verse 21 and 23. Not all that say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. That enter there is about in the earth. Because they are there. But will they remain? No. That's what he says. A slave does remain in the house. It's not that they're not there. But he said they will not remain there. Come on. And Matthew 7 verse 21 talk about them being used because they, they, they have prophesied in his name. They cast out demons in his name. Don't wonders in his name. They're being used. He never said they never done none of those things. But he said clearly they still practice lawlessness. They practice sin. They thought those things would cause the things that they do that were sinful 
to be ignored. But it was not so. Come on. There's a payday coming. I'm talking to you. The love of truth must be in you. Come on. It is truth that sets us free from. Truth is not given for us to just say we know the truth. It's to produce a result in our heart that, that aligns with God and his ways and principles that he wants to see manifest in our lives. When he says, you bear fruit and much fruit. No, sir. And it's that, that fruit is talking about the nature and character of God being birthed within you. And that nature doesn't have nothing to do with sin. It's the nature of what they call the spirit of Christ. Huh? It's the nature of Christ or what we call it. Spirit of Christ. You got it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he, he says then if anyone doesn't have the spirit of Christ is none of his. Huh? It's Romans 8 verse 9. Anyone have not the spirit of Christ. So it says that nature must dwell in you. That nature must what? Dwell in you. If it's not there then it says of course it proves that you are not really his. And that's why they say I never knew you. Come on. Because if that nature dwells in you what does that nature do? It kills the nature of the flesh. Romans 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ. Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. When he says the law of the spirit of life in Christ. He's talking about the nature of Christ. The spirit of Christ and the way it operates in you. It doesn't facilitate and condone sin. So no one can say, I know him and I'm finished with but I still sin. He said that person will be lying. They are not practicing the truth. Uh, come on. Because if you practice truth, what does it produce? righteousness of God hallelujah it doesn't produce sin truth does not produce sin hallelujah come on now Jesus had to teach them that that if they are going to be true disciples they must be free from sin because if they are, they are still wrapped apart, bound by sin, still giving sin service, how can they be true disciples? That's why I said, if you abide in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Come on. Abiding in the word doesn't produce sin. It produces righteousness. Come on. Truth is consistent, true and true. Come on. There's no lie in truth. You follow here. The one who stands in truth is standing with Christ. Huh? Truth is not just about saying what is right and true. It is a lifestyle. It is a life. It's not just something you talk. It's not just word spoken. But Jesus taught that true disciple is, this, is a true disciple in word and deed. A true disciple is what? A true disciple in word and deed. That's why Paul was saying that uh, in the second Thessalonians we read that, that the believers will be established in word and deed. Remember? Come on now. Huh? That means they will establish in truth. Established in Christ. The distinction must be made between those who are devoted to truth and those who just 
quote truth. Huh? Those who quote truth periodically but don't abide in the truth are not true disciples. Come on, somebody. Even the devil quotes the truth. When he was tempting Jesus in Matthew 5, as Matthew 4, verse 5 to 6, the devil took him up on a holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, huh, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. He quoted the truth. Didn't he? He quoted the truth when he says, For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up. Huh? Lest you dash your foot against a stone. The devil was quoting from the truth. Was he? But he was not using it in the right context. Jesus quoted from the truth using it to disarm the devil and overcome him. In Matthew 4 verse 7 he said to him, it is written again. In other words, there's more to it than just what you're quoted. And he says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Come on, he wasn't telling the devil not to tempt him, being led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil, as some suppose. <laughs> no, he was saying to the devil, not because there is angelic protection for those who are children of God, they should throw themselves into danger and said, God will protect me. It wasn't the Hebrew boys that threw themselves in the fire and said, we know our God will not let us burn. No, they were bound hands and feet and thrown in there. Come on now. Huh? And being bound hands and feet and thrown in there, they even said to Nebuchadnezzar, even if our God don't deliver us, you will not bow. Correct. So they were willing to die for the truth. Come on now. And God showed up in the fire. And deliver them. Huh? Come on, somebody. So we know then it's not merely about just talking. That are talkers out there, what they call them? Speakers. That are speakers out there. Come on now. But is not this being a true messenger and a true son of God is more than just being a speaker. You hear what I say? The devil is the father of lies. Huh? There is no capacity for truth in him. Even though he quotes from it, he cannot stand in it. Even though he what? He quotes from it, he cannot. Jesus said that about him in John 8 verse 44 to 45. He said, of those who were being led by the devil, he said to them, you are of your father, the devil. Come on. And he said what? The desires of your father, the devil, you will also do. Come on now. He says he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because what? There is no truth in him. Come on. When he speaks a lie, what does he do? He speaks from his own, in other words, he's speaking from his own opinion and views rather than what the word says. He's speaking from his own resources for he's a liar and he's a father of lies. But he says, but because I tell you the truth, <laughs> you do not believe. Come on. That's why he called them liars. He called them liars just like their father which are liars. Come on. Children of God are those who walk in truth consistently. No one who is of God can lie. Woo! Oh, you love that? 
Any truth about Christ that a person denies puts them in opposition to Christ. Any truth about Christ that what? Don't you know some who said yes? We believe that Jesus is, is a good prophet and a good man God used. But we don't believe he's no son of God. Don't you hear people say that already? Who say they believe in God? They don't believe he should be worshipped. Only God must get the worship. Come on. You heard that one before, don't you? Only God. Hallelujah. But God commanded angels to worship him. Now we never see anywhere God command angels to worship himself. So why did God have to command angels to worship him? That's right, because he's in bodily form as a man. Oh my God. But he's still God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he says the world was made through him and for him. Come on now. You got it somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. When a person operates under the leading of the Holy Spirit who is the spirit of truth he does not confirm lies the Holy Spirit confirms what? truth come on a lie may have some truth in it a lie may what? have some truth in it but truth has no lie in it you hearing this? A lie may have what? Some truth because lies may quote some truth in it to, to swear those that want to hear truth into deception. But truth has no lies in it. Come on. If one puts a little lie in truth, it is no longer the truth. Truth as a voice. I said truth as a voice. And it knows how to speak for itself. You believe that? It can be nothing else but truth. You hear me? Truth is eternal. Truth is constant. Truth has no variation. Being devoted to truth will put one at as a firm foundation huh? you'll put one on a firm foundation which cannot be shaken you believe that come on somebody truth has something to say about our relationships about our friendship about our business huh? about our life about our values, about our priorities, about our way of life. When one is devoted to truth, it affects us on every spear. It's not limited to a corner. Oh, that's when I go to church. But when I'm not at church, it's different. Come on now. You're following me, somebody. True relationships are built on truth and many rather to do the opposite they rather lies secrecy deception hypocrisy come on somebody fake it until they make it worldly pleasures unrighteousness Come on, somebody. So he says, remember what he says, 
those that love not the truth but have pleasure in what and righteousness god will send them strong delusion because the love of the truth was not in them come on when one disagrees denies or resists the truth then that fellowship is based and falls with and pretends and lacks the ingredients to produce a true relationship because then you end up saying what you want the person to hear instead of what it really is is a level of hypocrisy that goes and God one thing we know Jesus always gets turned against hypocrites man if you want to see Jesus argue and rebuke and shout and get angry check who you're talking with and listen to the statements he's making why would he use such strong terms hypocrites Come on. That was not mild. Huh? I'm not gentle and mild here. Uh-uh. Because the, the hypocrites won't speak truthfully. And when you're speaking to someone who's speaking to you truthfully, and you want to dodge and hide around your speech and be very tricky in your speech, you're just provoking them to wrath. But they never say none. So I can't understand why some not saying none to me. Because yeah, I'm not much for that game. I'm not into mind games. Come on. There is no real hope huh, of true friendship until one of the two compromises their position. It's either one who loves truth, compromise truth for the liar. Or the liar forsake lying to adhere to truth. Or they cannot become true friends. A liar and one who speaks and is devoted to truth. Come on. You got it? Hello? When one individual is loyal, to a position that is hostile and against the other person and the other person cannot be loyal to that position and remain in his or her current position at the same time truth will shift your position truth will cause you to lose friends quote unquote and family quote unquote and positions and possessions ah that's why the Lord was saying to Peter in Mark 28 10 verse 28 to 31 when Peter says Lord we have left all to follow you the Lord said anyone who left these things are these relationships for my sake and for the gospel He's talking about truth. Hello, somebody. Notice what is the cause there in verse 29. For my sake and for the gospel. It's either the gospel is true or it's not. Come on. Hello. Hello. Come on. And he says, what he said, there is, I say to you, there's no one who has left what? House, brothers, sisters, father, mother, wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospel. In other words, he knew that this love for truth may oftentimes cause people to leave these things and also these relationships and notice all the relationships are there
come on. It covers for all of them. And evil things, house, lands, possessions. Come on, somebody. He says, whoever leave it for my sake and for the gospel, he says, they will receive what? A hundredfold when? Now in this time. Come on now. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come what? Eternal. So he said, you are receiving more than what you live. Anytime you receive the word of God as truth and become devoted to truth, whatever you lose in the process, you're gaining more than what you lost. Hello, somebody. It's better to have a true son than a false son or a true daughter than a false daughter. True sister than a false sister. True brother than a father. You see what I'm saying? You're still gaining more true in the Lord than those you had that were founded on lies and deception. Come on now, somebody. It's not going anywhere because it's all fake. Come on, somebody. Truth will reveal truth. Truth doesn't hide truth. Truth doesn't hide itself. You got that? The nature of truth must be revealed in you. Say no hide and seek. Come on, somebody. A large part of having true relationship relies on truth and transparency. Huh? The means of being able to trust each other and share or tell anything to each other. Come on. It's not tailored a way that you want to check or control the response. But just telling them the truth as it is. It's not a sugar coat version to tailor the era. To be control them how you want me to respond. Because if I tell them what it really is, they might. So you're going to tell them how you believe they can handle it. That's not true. Come on now. You're hearing me. Hallelujah. Truth. How are we going to love the brethren in sincerity if we don't, if we lack truth? How are we going to love the brethren in sincerity if we lack truth? If you say, I'm all right when you're not all right. And then, we, because you say you're all right, we don't check up on you. Then you say, look how me not all right and you don't check up. Then I must know there's something wrong with me. If you want true relationship, you must abide in truth. You can't visit truth only when it's convenient to you. And only use truth when you want to control the outcome of people's action. You have to stop being that control freak. That is seeking to control others and be faithful to truth and trust that truth will deliver you. What do you say? But if you rely on lies as an escape route, the father of lies one day will reveal to you. That his work in feeding you with the lies was never for your salvation. 
His intent from beginning was to steal, kill, and destroy, and it has not changed. So those that live by lies will perish by it. Come on, somebody. The mark of a true believer is that they love truth even when it hurts. Huh? Even when it hurts, they love truth. There's a passion in them for truth. Come on, somebody. They don't want persons to lie to them because the lies sound better than the truth. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who lie fear exposure while those who are committed to truth embrace exposure. They are not afraid of persons checking up on them, looking into them, checking into why that was said. Come on. Because all that is there is truth. Yeah. But those who practice lie don't like the inquiry. It's very aggravating to them. Come on. They have the mindset of doing things without being questioned. Ah. Uh, talk to me now. Those who operate like that is not operating by the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to you. The Spirit is not here to lead us in some truth. <laughs> the Spirit is here to lead us into what? All truth. Come on. So is he hiding anything from us? Not at all. He's here to reveal it all to us. Come on. Even the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If someone tells a lie to initiate or maintain a friendship, that person is now locked into a position to consistently lie to keep that friendship. Lying to a friend betrays his or her trust. Come on. Huh? Two cannot walk unless they agree. What if you made a person agree to a lie? You have deceived them. You're not a true friend. Deceivers are not true friends. Come on, somebody. Hello. Lying to a friend betrays is our trust because true friendship rely on truth in order to bond effectively. A friendship that is maintained by a lie binds two or more people together in a false position that lacks the power to produce true friendship. Because what happens when the truth comes out? The person will realize that all they were building on was false. Lies are not real. So it means that what they had was not real. Come on, somebody. Eventually, the one who seeks the truth will find it. And the one who is committed to lies will be exposed. Come on. Ultimately, truth will surface. And when it does, its rewards and penalties are never far behind. Come on. Whenever sin manifests, it never does so without a lie. 
Every time sin manifests, like come. There's a deception. There's a hiding. Hiding of hands. <laughs> uh, did I do that? Uh, I don't know who just, that just happened. You ever heard that talk? Uh, it's lies. Because you know. You just don't want to say it. Come on somebody. Truth will surface when, and when it does, it, its rewards and penalties are not far behind. Come on. There's always an exchange of truth for lie. Or a devaluation of truth for sin to come in. Once you value truth, sin not coming in. Because truth will execute, evict, and cast off sin. Truth makes no room for sin. Come on, somebody. Truth is more than just talking something that is true. It's more than quoting something that is true. It's living true. Get it? God cannot lie. It is impossible for God to lie. Correct? This is the very important to understand the truth. Why does God hate lies? Because it is against his nature to lie. And if his spirit dwell in you, isn't that nature dwelling in you? Not to lie. Come on now, somebody. He cannot do it. Come on. We who are God's children must have that same nature. Come on. Huh? And that same character must be in us. An innate hatred for lies. Come on now. Ephesians 5. Verse 1 says, be imitators of God as his dear children. Come on. Come on. It was Paul who says, he that lie, lie no more. But speak the truth in love. Come on, somebody. We don't encourage lies. Come on now. Even scientific studies show that when a man lies, it affects his nervous system. That's why they have lie detection machine can hook up on him and realize when he lies. The measuring rod goes all over the place. Because in his nature of the man that God made in his image and likeness, that was not part of his makeup. To lie. It is unhealthy for him to lie. Come on, somebody. Hello. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when a man lies, even nature itself tell him it's not right. Come on, somebody. God cannot lie. His words have creative power. It brings to pass what he says. Huh? How can someone lie? When whatever comes out of his mouth becomes reality. If God calls this wall and it's white, red, it's going to become red because he speaks the word, believing in the word. And the word is going to bring to pass what he says to change the pixels in the color to red. That's why it is not that he will not lie. He cannot lie. So he then said, if you are soaked with his word, his word doesn't lie. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And according to the abundance of the heart, the mouth 
So he said, if your mouth is releasing what is in your heart, and then your heart is filled with the word of God, and the word of God is truth, then truth must follow. It can be truth sometime, but lie the other time. Come on now. Because that, that was what James was saying. Does a stream bring forth bitter and sweet water at the same time? Say, but you're, you're, you're blessed with your tongue and you're cursed with the same tongue. James is speaking of more than just the tongue. He's speaking about the heart. Because he knows the teaching that Jesus gave. It's not about us knowing how to steam our tongue. It's about us knowing how to keep a pure heart. Because he says, it's out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. And if the heart is pure, pure words will proceed. Come on, somebody. He says, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bring forth what? Good things, but an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bring forth evil things. So he said, it's not about you just biting your tongue. And then say, bite in your lip. Don't go say nothing. He says, no, it's about your heart being prepared by the Lord. That when you speak, there'll be no deceit or guile in your mouth. Because your communication is pure. Come on, somebody. But if there's deceit in your tongue, and there's a dependency in your heart to use truth only when it is convenient to you. The devil have use over that tongue too. It's not the Lord only. And he says, yes, you may give some heed to what the Lord is saying. But at the end of the day, you'll be just considered a liar. And all liars will have their part in a lake of fire. It's not so. Big liar, little liar. <laughs> White liar, black liar. All liar. Come on. Because he says, you need to know that that life must end in Christ. In Christ, you are not the same. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I now live of the faith of Jesus Christ who lives in me. He lives of the faith, live by faith in the Son. Who loved me and gave himself. He is the one who lives in me now. And he said, if I believe Christ never lied, why should he live in me and now I'm lying? He said, that would prove he's not living in me. We don't want a visitation. We want that living. Come on, somebody. That dwelling also in us that is not temporary but consistent, constant. Huh? Too many times we have rammed and tried to sugarcoat the ram and make it seem like it's not so bad. Because I had good intentions. No, the devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. Speak the truth and speak it ever. Ever heard that one? Cause it what it will. Hallelujah. Because if you depend on the devil to save you, 
and you really believe you're saved because of the lie you tell, you think you're not going to pay for it. You may escape the punishment from man, but you will not escape it from God. Because you are still drawing from Satan resources. Don't rather from drawing from the spirit of truth. You're still drawing from Satan resources. To keep yourself and to have the life you want to have. And there's a consequence for that. Huh? Come on, somebody. So anyone who is a true child of God must make up in their mind whatever the truth is, I want to know it. Hallelujah. And whatever the truth is, I want to stand in it. I want, I don't want to just stand by the truth. I want to live in the truth. And I want the truth to live in me. Come on, somebody. Hello, Sister Judy. I was I was there today. I was Going up sailing when I saw one of the officers from by Grand Villa. He was testifying to me into stroke and surgery and nearly lost his life. And was asking me if I've been over the station from then. I said to him, say, but uh, no. I said, because they don't love the gospel I preach. <laughs> I said, they don't love the gospel that I preach, man. And I'm not going over there for arguments. You got to know when you have sown enough into a place. And, and if the people want to respond, they will. And those who respond will run with it. But those who not respond, you have to just leave them. Because whatever you said, they don't forget you. Know. They still recall what you said. It's just them need to act on it now. It's not new information they need. Huh? But I was just looking at it say, look at the amount of things they take out the man's life. And the man would not, all because he would not sit and receive the love of the truth. Showing loyalty to the denomination of a truth. And I told him, there's a danger in that. Because you see, every time I come and I share the truth and you ignore or you say or you scoff or you make so, there's a danger. Come on now. Because while you're serving in your occupation, you know, I didn't come there about your occupation. I come there with the gospel. I was sent. I didn't just went. And so when you oppose the gospel, you know, there are certain things going to happen. Like they don't realize why all that place is burning on any over different place now. I can't go to a place and that's why I don't go to places regularly. Because if I go to a place and go to a place, they, they beseech you with the word and they go on somewhere now. So it just starts happen there you now. And I know that it's part of the apostolic grace in my life. Well, Lord, if you're going to a house and a peace return to you, don't starve your foot, man. Because it's not only good for them there. How many pastors can go there and, and they go and sign and leave and they're alright? You know, but any time you go there, you're not going to be the same. That's why I tell him, take heed. Not you. Take heed. If the love of the truth is in you, it's going to make a difference for you. But you know you're not living right. And you just want to play. 
debate on scripture to say no more than scripture than who they think about scripture because you you think it would teach your church but you know you're not living in scripture you know? but somebody who live in it talking to you and you don't want to hear them you think there's not going to be consequence for that this is not some some quiz test of bible knowledge <laughs> it's about the life you're living. And if you're not living the life, you must take, take it from somebody who's living the life. But no, man. Some have to learn the hard way, don't you? Yeah. Hallelujah. But take it to the Lord in prayer. Every mother would say, take it to the Lord in prayer. Praise God. <laughs> Love of the truth. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> All right, give you a chance to question or to add your coming to what we've been teaching. You wanted to know the truth, the whole truth and not the truth. So uh, those who want a question can write your questions in the comment box. We'll be reading them online as you put forward the questions. And of course, also, would also appreciate questions or comments in the house. Whoever wants to do so, as long as we have the time, we'll of course allow for that. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead. Good night, everyone. Praise All right. God. So, um, as the note that you just ended on in regards to loving the truth. Yes. Um, I just this evening I was having a conversation with mom, and she was making reference to the the terrible earthquake that happened in the that um in was where was it syria, syria. right mm. and um many times when these disasters take place people say how could there be a god who would allow such terrible things to happen even to little children because the news was mm -hmm. emphasizing on how the babies were destroyed etc mm -hmm. and i was reminding her that i was reminding her that um a lot of times, we, when, when we just look at things just from the natural perspective, mm -hmm. we say, boy, it kind of, I wonder why God would let that happen. But if you look, from, look at it from the spiritual perspective, mm -hmm. you'll see that a lot, God is still just in what, when he allows disaster to come upon a nation, mm -hmm. it's because God has been warning and warning and warning and that nation is not taking heed to the yes. word of God. Because the, the word of God cannot go void and it, and it is the word of truth. Yes. So this disaster, it, you cannot be saying God is unjust and God, and God should not have allowed that to happen, etc. Because if you look, if you look closely at um, the, the religions that exist in those nations and they, they don't um, accept, if you should go there with the gospel, they will not accept the gospel mm -hmm. of truth. Never because, will. Right, because they hold on to whatever it is, that religion that is in their nation, they continue to hold on to it, right? And so, if God can't find the, the number of righteous persons in that nation to to cause him to not let that disaster come upon them. The disaster is going to take place. Definitely. Right? So I was just reminding her that it's all there in the Bible, in the scripture. It has happened so many times to so many nations. And yet nations do not take heed until when the disaster comes, people are saying, Oh, let us pray for this nation. It's not that you're not wicked not to... <laughs> it's not wicked to, to, to look into it and say, but, you know, God was warning mm -hmm. and warning and warning. People reject the word of truth. So what is going to take you, take, take place? Sudden disaster. Yes, and yes. it has happened to Jamaica. I was reminding her that it happened to Jamaica already. Yes. Parts of Jamaica has experienced it because of the wickedness of, of people's heart. And they refuse to accept the word of truth. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the truth is not out there, but people reject it. Yes. So when they reject it, consequences, consequences follow. must follow. That's and that's true. just the word. Yes. I wonder, 
You see, because they have not accepted the word of God as truth, then many are being troubled. Notice what Jesus said to the disciples when he appeared that he read since evening in, in, in what, Luke 24. Right? When he, he said, O oh, slow of heart to believe what was written by the prophets. In other words, there was written record already what the prophets prophesied. But they ignored it. Because had they kept mindful of it, they would not be shaken by his cursing fiction. Because he was saying, wasn't that prophesied of by the prophets? Shouldn't the Christ experience, suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Now, if he who is the only begotten Son of God, the one who made through him made the heavens and earth come in human flesh. Suffer that kind of death. Now who on the earth in a sinful state born in sin can say it is unjust for us to go through that. You see, so he said when they <laughs> because they ignore the word you know, that's why it is so astonishing to them. That's why they say, we are astonished. That's why they say, but the Lord told him already that these things would happen, didn't he? Same way saying in Matthew 24, there'll be wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquake. Huh? And, he, and he says, these things are just the beginning of sorrow. He didn't say these things are the end. Come on. These things are what? What begin up sir for who? It's not for his disciples. It's for the world who reject the disciples and the message he gave them for the world. The world reject it. The world don't want to hear it. But they just want to live long, healthy, and prosperous in sin. And the word is that sin must stop. Come on. Come on now. So this is just the beginning, man. No more to come. Because if they are mindful about scripture, wouldn't they know that there are babies in Sodom and Gomorrah? When Lot alone was brought out of life, out of the two cities, burned, destroyed by fire, that those two cities now lie below the depths of the Dead Sea. See upon land now that they say no living sea creature can live in it. It's so full of salt content, no sea creature can live in it. They have already used submarine and gone on in the bottom of it and find uh, debris of the the, the, the stone, headstone that they had for the inch of the city marks, Saddam. That's where the city used to be, where the Dead Sea is. Nothing can live there still. So weren't there babies there? There weren't babies when Noah, when Noah was going to the ark and flood was outside and everybody was dead. They are ignoring God's warnings. And disaster must follow. Both for them and for their children. And it will not something that's going to be skimping and going around. Tip it to an own like he's walking on eggshell. He's God. And he said all these things were made for him. Come on now. Made through him and for him. So he said, if you're going sharing this thing, man, you need to honor the one that make it available, man. You can't be doing your own thing on his land and think you know a right to take you off. He's the true landlord. And he have the ownership of the yard to say, I want these who are off. 
and they're coming off, buddy. <laughs> they are, he's going to remove them. He said it in the word. You know? He will send his angels and what? Remove from his kingdom all things that offend and what? And those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. And they'll be really national. He said, these are just the beginning. When Jesus was here teaching, the tower of Shiloh fell, you know. And I think there were, what, 18 men that died in that tower that they were building. Crushed to death by these great columns that they were building there, the tower of Shiloh. In its construction, some default went wrong and it fell down on them and it, they died, perished instantly on sight. There were fathers and sons and brothers to people. They were family. They had family. But all of them died there. They were telling Jesus about this thing. He said, yes, no, go and stop and have a prayer vigil. Like what most church people are doing up there. You said, 10 people dead on building. Everybody want. Let us go and pray that these things don't happen again. That's not Jesus. Jesus said to them, 18 and on the top of Shiloh fell and killed. Do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwell in Jerusalem? They said, no. He says, I tell you, no, they are not worse sinners. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. He said, you're not going to stand up or better than them. So what should they repent to do? To believe the gospel. They don't want to believe the gospel, but they still want to have the nice life. Because it's their life, they can't live it or they want to live it. There is a God that's going to answer that. And sure says not so. Hello. Come on. So they can keep ignoring man hope that it will go away. But he says, this is just the beginning of sorrows. More coming. Hello. Praise God. How many missionaries, how many preachers have been there declaring the gospel of Christ? They imprison some. They stone some. They kill some in the street and when certain things hit them, they say, ah, we, we are not as big in, in size as 80 is. Why you think there's so much disaster eating 80 and not eating little Jamaica? Because Jamaica know they kill preachers up on the street when they preach gospel, you know. And that happened in 80. How much people from here going on mission trip to 80? You know, see no hand put up. So they, they are not making the connection. Say anywhere is hostile to the gospel. Disaster no stop beat them like a China. See them so. A China arrest people just for have a Bible. People have to be having Christian church on the ground. Just stay there. So you think all that flood and tsunami that eating them and you have to come up through the country and come hide out and live. You say just by coincidence. Yet still those who hear are annoyed how much church we have here. But they don't realize how much things they are saved from experience in here because of the church here. Because the Lord said to his disciples, Anyway, you preach it and they don't receive it, dust your foot off. Because that place is going worse than Sodom. And what did he say that? All right. But let me ignore it, man. Have parties here and we are ignoring Follow me, man. Because <laughs> you see, when we gone, it's going to be another story. Amen. Yes, man. Anymore. Um. Sister Sharon, that was the same thing I was 
saying to pastor this morning with the little girl that was under the rubble is all her neck come up to so they could see her mm -hmm. and so they gave her water and waiting to take her out and i was saying why those children but then the answer came because they realized that you're not hearing and that's that is what you get when you're not listening to what god is saying so anything you ask god you will get the answer soon or later but best sooner my but question I also inserted in it what i heard when i heard you said i said that even in the disaster god, god showed himself present mm -hmm. that they still found a baby Yes. Under all of those concrete rubbles, Just born. alive. Mm -hmm. And they were kissing that baby like they find God. Yes, yes he was saying. Jesus. And he said, Look in the disaster, God showed that even in his wrath, have... there is great mercy. So even in a disaster, they will still see God's hand showing up to spare life, you know. But they don't think about the life spare still. They think about he should have stopped it for him, so none of this do harm to us. Mm -hmm. They don't take any responsibility about the action that led up to trigger those demonic activities in the air that produce those kind of disasters. Because remember, you know, even Job children them it was the devil that attacked job children the how wind blew and the house and the house fell killing his 10 children in there one day it's not god go do that but god restored job Man. double for his trouble so you see god still showing that even in the midst of disaster he's there you know for you to make a comeback from it so if he's, he's the one bringing you in the comeback from it, why shouldn't you then have a different heart and response to him in going forward? Amen. No, they carry grudge. They get, they get God more. <laughs> so my next question, would that be a strong delusion on them where they cannot respond to what is yeah, it will be a strong lose. Strong delusion is coming, you know. More is coming. In other words, what they see now is not strong delusion because right now, God is still showing his mercy even in their disaster. But, but the time is coming, he says, when the Antichrist will reveal himself. Okay. No mercy will be shown, you know. Because mm -hmm. when the Antichrist will reveal himself, that point is who's on the Lord's side alone. That no salvation. There was one the Antichrist side is just gathered for destruction. Come on, because the Lord said, strong delusion is coming that time for, for those who didn't believe the truth to believe the lie. In other words, they were staying on the fence. But God now going to make them see some things what they say. He look like that man be true for true. And follow him and be destroyed. Because he, he is coming with great power. He's coming with great power. Oh God, why make him work look like say, boy, yes, man. This really look like a God. <laughs> because he says they would not love the truth. Huh? Love of the truth was not in them. They did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not what? Believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. See why we say the truth set you free from sin? Because the the truth is speaking against sin, you know. So they can't have the love for truth and still continue in sin. But they want to say they love truth while they're still continuing in sin. So it's going to improve. 
strong delusion will come and they will be condemned come on now. yes yeah, good night yes um at work apostle i always share the word but there's a particular young lady that i've spoke mm. with on several occasions about the word and she she resisted <laughs> now we are talking about facing consequences so that person is facing some sickness now or having mm. ailment in the body and then calling on us to pray you think we should pray i don't know you think we should still pray even though they are resisting what you are sharing with them that's my question there is no salvation without truth no? the world wants that but that's not available it's not available saint john saint john what 17 verse 9 Hear, O Jesus, pray. And this is unlike how the worldview Christian should pray. But this is how Jesus prayed, where the very word Christian come from. Jesus says, I pray for them. Them who? His disciples. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all are mine. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I'm glorified in them. Who is Jesus praying for? The world? Does he say specifically in praying to the Father God, I do not pray for the world? Where did the church get it from to pray for the world? That's why I say, if you have a love for truth, because some people are very deluded in what truth is. You see, we pray for them to be saved, but they cannot be saved without the truth. That's why Jesus is saying, I pray not for them, because they have not received him. And they will never be saved without him. Yes, I'm, I'm mm. asking, can you as a believer ask, ask, God's mercy to be, you know, shown to them in terms of the, 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 the affliction or whatever it is that the infirmity that they are going through. Because um, in some cases, person gets healing and then they start to believe, um, seek after salvation after that healing occurs. So I'm asking, if it, is it wrong to pray you for would, them? You would position uh -huh. to the person salvation for their healing not healing for salvation which the church have been doing for years which is putting the cart before the horse because they never have salvation without repentance so so when if you notice those who are telling you pray for me while you're in sin have they come out? <laughs> so they have only been using you and the anointing and grace in your life to maintain their sinful lifestyle. They are not, God is not glorified in them. God is not glorified in them because always God glorified even in us. It's in St. John 15, verse 8, that we bear much fruit. And it says, even us who are in him, if we don't bear fruit, we are going to be cut off. So what do I am for them that don't even in the vine? You see, so, so what would possess, what that opportunity of them being sick, 
should be an opportunity for us to witness to them again about their need to surrender to Christ. If they express to us they don't have no need to do that, no. They just want healing. It's not your call to pray. It's not your call to pray. Because that is them wanting salvation without Christ. And we are never sent to do that. Our work is to point them to Christ. He says, we have been given this ministry of reconciliation. Pleading with them, be reconciled to God. So when they come with them, say, you need. After time, why? Many of them don't come here. They will send prayer requests, but they don't come. Because every time they come out tell them, this is a wake up call for you. Do you see the need now? And if they tell me they don't see the need, I'm not praying. I just want to get better. All right. Maybe they get better. And maybe they come and brag and boast. Well, see, they never pray, but they get better. But where are they? Still in their sin. Still continuing to a devil's hell. So that didn't do them no good. So you see, the, the point if of every healing that Jesus did was to point them to the Father. You know? It wasn't just to give them a healing. Because if it was just about the healing, when many sick people come in, just wouldn't leave from the community and go somewhere else. Because he realized if they get healed and they don't commit to the message of salvation from sin, they're still going to perish. That's why I tell him, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. Whether you live old, or you die young, or you have a bent house, or you die in a building that crashed them on you, like those people who say, you will perish just like them. It's this gospel that brings you that salvation. What Paul says is the power of God unto salvation to who? To them that believe. If they don't believe, we cannot help them. Because he said, those who don't believe are already condemned. Because they don't believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Come on. Jesus said that to Nicodemus. Right? Right? So, we, 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 we want our heart goes out to them and their need and they cry. But we still know that the only reason we have a hope is our belief in the gospel. You know? And we can tell them there's a hope other from the hope we have access it's the same way like when the Lord was saying to Peter when they saw how the rich young ruler came and left. But he was keeping the Lord from him as a boy. Then they said, well, boy, Lord, who going to save? Are you telling the rich man, says, sell any goods, give to the poor and come, who going to save? The Lord says, anyone who come they must do the same thing like what the other disciples did. They have to forsake everything for him. Come on. There's not they must hold on to us an idol and say, well, you know, because me have enough of this, we can't really give it up. Everything he says. And now that rich young ruler followed what the Lord said and sell all his goods, give to the poor and come. He would have received what the Lord told them into verse 30. That anyone give up anything for the gospel or for his sake would receive 100 fold more. In other words, he would become 100 times more rich. But he never trusted the Lord to do it. Because Abraham was rich. So being rich was not what stopped him to enter the kingdom. Come on. It was his trusting in his riches that when the Lord said give it up, he couldn't do it. He trusted in his riches more than the eternal life he's asking Jesus to give him. And the riches couldn't give him eternal life. And he's asking Jesus, what should I do to inherit eternal life? 
And Jesus telling him, and he'd rather leave without it. Come on now. You get it? So that's why the Lord said, Oh, God, it is for those who trust in their riches to enter the kingdom of God. Come on now. So he wants you to trust in him like that. Huh? Because what if we, we pray for them and they don't get better and die? You see? Their soul would still perish. You know? So, but what, but what if we pray, we told them, give your heart to the Lord and we pray for them, and they still didn't get better and die? Their soul will be with the Lord, you know? You see it? Because then they had made their peace with him. They had surrendered their life to him and allowed him now. They, they are not putting their, their hope in their flesh. They are putting their hope in him. So even if the flesh die, they know they have a hope with him. You see it? But when they have hope in the flesh, soon as the flesh gets better, you and your God can stay there. You can't go and live for your life because they're going to live for them. Just pray for me. So one day I come. They're not doing it because they still trust in their flesh. Come on now. You get it? So my, my heart aches for the world and I know God's heart aches for the world too because it's because he loved the world why he sent his son. But he, and he didn't send his son to condemn the world. But he says, the reason the condemnation is there, the world has made a choice. They rather darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. They don't want to give up on their evil practices for the life that God called them for. They rather that life more than the life God called them to give them. That is the condemnation. You see? John 3 verse 19 to 21. Jesus was saying that to Nicodemus. Where does the condemnation come since the son was not sent to condemn the world? That the world through might be saved. He said, this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because what? Yeah, these were evil. For everyone practicing evil, that practicing evil there is practicing sin. Everyone practicing evil hates the light. Why do they hate the light? And does not come to the light? Because he's afraid that his evil practices will be exposed. I always tell you, it's not those who practice righteousness that say in farmer must dead. It's those who practice sin. And God going to write them out. He says, but he who does the truth, what he does, he come to the light that his deeds may be what? Clearly seen that they have been done. In God, he's practicing righteousness, so he's not afraid to anybody find out or talk about it. But those who practice sin, they, they, they don't want people to talk about what they're doing. Come on. That's why they don't come to the light. Huh? And if they don't come to the light, what is going to happen to them in the darkness? The spirits that operate in the darkness now will take them over and start to do destructive things to them. That's the reason why the light come, the light come to save them from the darkness. But they are out of the darkness. There are creatures that are called spirits of the darkness that lays way there to do destruction to men. That the Lord said they need this light to have this life. And those spirituals that are 
cast in outer darkness have access to those who are in the darkness. So that's why we are calling them. As the Lord said, come out of darkness into his marvelous light. In his light, there is no darkness at all. But they don't want that. Because it, it means they have to give up on some sinful practices that they rely on to get through this life. That the Lord is telling them, you have to give that up to get this. And they said, no. They're not ready to give that up yet. Come on now. Get it? There is no salvation without the truth. And those who keep hiding from the truth will keep on facing the consequences. And no amount of prayer we have for them is going to stop them from facing it. And the Lord said, whatsoever man saw that he shall also reap. It's coming. Hello. Wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That life is in him. So those in him don't have to fear death. They know when they die, the body dies, but they still live in him. And he's raising up a new body for them. Those that don't believe, don't believe that. They believe, no. One life you live, I may live it. Dead, dead it done. So they're not listening to that. Mm. Hallelujah. So, yeah, so they have to face, as they said, they want water. Eh, it's coming. Hallelujah. Yes, anyone else? Yes. Um, good night. Yes, sir. I have one question, which is, I believe that it was, it's in Revelation, it mentioned that Christ come um, riding on an horse. Yes. My question is, is Christ omnipresent? Yes. Is it that the, um, the horse have a significant purpose? Apart from just being a horse? The horse is a horse. <laughs> okay. He rides right. on a horse. People ride on a horse, right? Yes. Right. So he rides on a horse. So, he doesn't have to ride on one. Okay. It just, it, the scripture just says he comes riding on a horse. A white horse and representing of a, of a king that comes to conquer. When he rode into Jerusalem, he rode on an ass. That's like a king that is approaching in peace. But when a king comes on a horse, a white horse riding, he's coming to conquer. Okay. He's not coming to a peace. Okay. That's the decision. <laughs> okay. okay. Right? So it's, it's a statement declaring the kind of entrance he's having more than about what he's riding and what, it, what the purpose of what he's riding. It's about the statement that is declaring, say, he's coming to conquer every Negro and bow. And every, every resistance, every opposition when shut down that day. Right, so because they will see him in all his power and all his glory, the very one they were denying, the very one they were saying, a ship. He don't exist, he don't real, a white man lie. They go and see. Right, so that's why he's saying that all of that will be significant in their mind at that point, but, but that, then it will be too late for, for them to now retrieve or to live a life better, to repent and to live a life better now to the Lord, to be rewarded for the obedience because they spent all those years in disobedience and rebellion to God and unbelief. And now God himself is carrying them into account. Yeah. Got it? So that, that, that's, so that's why, even though them have many vehicles now, if there's um, going to be royalty, then still go and find some art. And you see man coming in with swords and art, just marching in. When they're having some like, like high authority, coming yes. in, they still true. use art. 
Right. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. The image is there to show like when men of dignitaries come in the ride on chariots and many swords and horses and vehicles run to say it's a diplomat. So anything in the way must move out of the way enough. Swords are stand by to say, oh, we here to back him up and show say so nobody can touch him. That is the image given. But the Lord is saying when he is coming, it's not on no road. He's in the cloud. Uh, so he said it will be an even greater display of power than what any man can show on the earth. And so in light of that, any opposition will be crushed. So he said even the antichrist and the beast and the, the false prophet will be cast into the fire. Uh, that's just because a sword will go out of his mouth and destroy them. So that, that will be a sight. Huh? Yes, man, I'm glad to see me the pan hallelujah side. The pan for me white ass to the right. What do you mean? Hallelujah. <laughs> I shout hallelujah when we see Antichrist throw down and the beast and Satan and all these people them with him when we yeah with him. Now then they woo. Yes, man. You are short, hallelujah. Because we we spoke long and hard for them to hear. But they didn't want to hear. God said that they 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 they, they, they deafened their, their ears. Mm, and stiff their necks. They closed their eyes. Not wanting to see or to hear what you're saying. They say, stop an eyes, man. We don't hear that. Come on. So, but, but now the time come that God say, all right, now it's my time to speak now. And who is going to be able to answer him? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why when Christ is coming back, yeah. um, we who are children of righteousness will also be coming on our hearts which we signify the, that power which we are coming with, which the world cannot receive because the world don't you know, see nor hear and they are not in obedience. So they can't receive that power. But they will envy us because we are the blessed one. Mm. Right? Yes. Because we are already in him. You know, when he comes, it's not like we're going up there to right now. Us. <laughs> when he comes, we'll just appear with him. Because our life is already with him. You know? That's what they don't know. So it's not like say we, we waiting to be with him. We are already with him. That's why he's omnipresent. You know, we are already with him because we are all those who are in Christ are already in him. But the thing that when he manifests himself now in his physical presence and power in the atmosphere. Say, we will also take on that form of manifestation. So it says that when he appears, John is saying, we don't know what we shall be. But when he appears, we shall be like him. So he says, that transformation will take place in an instant. And we still know each other despite how we, our bodies have been transformed. Because there's an inner knowing of those who are in Christ. Because it's the same spirit in all of us. And so that knowing will be there. But it will be an awesome thing to know. We, we into that Calvary army, you know. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we want persons to be on board with it. That's why we are declaring the word for them not to be caught up in the world's affairs that they forget of the day that the Lord warned that is coming. Huh? Yeah, praise God. Yes. Um, this verse stood out to me. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. Yes. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, yes. brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief mm. of the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the you, Jesus. Sanctification of the 
the, of the sanctification spirit. of the spirit and believe and of believe the truth of the truth praise god that's awesome hallelujah hallelujah that, that is something powerful and he said they received that through the gospel that was preached to them see that in verse 14 to which he called you he says god called you to this sanctification this salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth by our gospel you were called to it by our gospel you know it's those who god sent to preach it to you that brought you into it uh, hallelujah to which to which he called you by our gospel for obtaining the obtaining of the what glory of our lord jesus christ awesome come on so that's why he says that's why paul is saying i'm not ashamed of the gospel because he says, some people feel intimidated to no say they hearing this kind of gospel and believing it because the world will say you believe that then you believe all of that and many people sit down and sit and say well me not sure as so him says so why well, have you just try believe but paul said no i'm not ashamed of this whether the world mock or jeer this is the power of god and to salvation not to everybody say to them that believe come on so who believe must feel shame because they believe hallelujah because there is a reward for believing they didn't need to see it to believe it they believe it because god's word said it hallelujah that's true faith we didn't need to see jesus rise to believe he rose from the dead I didn't see him rise from the dead. I wasn't born around that time, nor have I seen any video clip of him raising to say, yes, you see the evidence. No, but I believed. And the believing, I believe, he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. And I saw the signs following me. I lay hands upon the sick and they recover. I speak with new tongues. I trample and serp, scorpion and serpent. And it can't do me no harm. Come on, somebody. I've cast out devils. And I declare the glory of the Lord is killed up. And principalities and powers have to fall. Hello, somebody. Dead here. Dead are raised back to life. Liam walk. Dumb talk. Blind see. Deaf hear. Come on, somebody. All them testimony now. This is one house, man. No, but they know they go come to me saying I'm alive. Too much testimony, man. You have to, you have to start them up. See what you when they say. You have to start them. Hallelujah. And more to come. <laughs> Hallelujah. I so said, if I didn't, if that gospel was a lie, the lie could not produce true results in people's life. Hallelujah. And I tell him all the while, say, if it was a lie and I believe in a lie, that would mean that I believe what in Satan's deception. So how can Satan's deception make me a better person? Satan not working to make anybody good. That in itself is a contradiction. So those who know the truth follow the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah, man. Because those who say they're living better, how are they really living? Look at their lifestyle. Have they stopped sinning? Well, I know I've stopped. Can they say the same? Not at all. <laughs> they're still in sin. Praise God. They need to get saved from sin. Got it? So we got to understand when you are in Christ, you know, it's a big deal. You got it? It's a whole different thing from when you are not. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Anyone stated anything online? Okay, all right. Well, we have covered the base here and there, so we'll just give the final word. Praise God. Bow your heads with me. We're going to close. We're already over our time. Father, we just thank you for your grace and your anointing, your Holy Spirit in bringing us into deeper levels of truth and understanding the, the end times and things of the last days and things to come. My God, of what you are going to do in this life. That men will know that your word is true and your word will not return to your void, but it must accomplish what you sent it for to do. The, the record is there to prove of what you have already said will be accomplished in the earth if man does not repent. What will be stated? And what will come upon him is already stated. But he said, those who believe and repent, the same shall be saved. Hallelujah. And so I pray grace over the hearers that they will not just hear, but be doers of the word, not deceiving themselves to think that just hearing makes them better. But that they put the word in practice. For they said, he that practice righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. And so I pray grace will be released that they will practice your word, walk in truth, and worship you in spirit and in truth. And indeed, the testimony will stand that they are truly your children, bought with the precious blood of Jesus, filled with your Holy Spirit, and made into a new creation in Christ to bring you glory and honor. We give you the praise and the glory, Father, and we claim the victory. I pray that healing be released to those who are sick, those who are afflicted, those who are suffering some ailment in their body that believe this word. You said healing is the children's bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you want them to experience healing in their bodies as well as in their soul. For John said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. As your soul prospers. Hallelujah. And so I pray that grace will be released to them. Even now. For their full recovery. And for testimony to come out of this. To your glory. As they walk by faith. And not by sight. In Jesus' name. Come on. Give him the praise right now. Give him the praise. Glory to God. Good to be here and good to. Share the word with you one more time. Hope you got something out of that that you run with and put in focus and see the power of God manifest in your life. Give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your heart. And while you're doing so, I'll give the last word to those who are watching online. Those who are watching online, you're watching Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ. And his kingdom wants to know the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. And there's a lot to cover. There's so much more we want to touch in depth, but there's so little time to do it. But we try to give as much as we can within the given time we have with you here. I hope that it was very enlightening to you. And any further questions, of course, you can call me and find out about it. Information is on the screen. Hallelujah. Those who wish to know more about the word we preach it's called the gospel of the kingdom we have a book we have released last year it's called the gospel of the kingdom subtitled the gospel that jesus preached and so i want you to know that gospel is written and released last year it's on amazon.com you can order it from the church here or you can order it uh, from amazon.com anywhere around the world just write in go on amazon.com type in the search box Richard V. Fagan, and the book will come up. You can order it. And of course, any person that want to have more teachings on it, know that all the teachings are not in the book. We are teaching this message for over 20 years. And so we want to hear more of the teachings. You can connect with us on Facebook. Send a friend's request to Richard V. Fagan. Be plugged into the live stream. We have five live stream services per week. And also, there's more context added to our YouTube version. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, which will be vegan, and you'll see more teachings there also that are added to the broadcast that we give here on the live stream from Facebook. 
praise God. So we encourage you also check us out. Our website is increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. Those who desire to sow to the ministry can sow to the website. Those who desire to know more about us, our caller, contact me. You can call me at 876 839 nine three nine zero eight seven six five five seven two four two seven looking forward to hear from you and to be the most holy faith in the lord until next time be strong in the lord and the power of his mind god bless you hallelujah bless you all may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord have his countenance upon you and give you his peace god bless you good bless you all